So today, um, with us, we have Mr. Kevin Scott. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. Uh, like one of the reasons like I wanted to have this platform was just to be able to be a motivation, be an encourager, be a blessing and have testimonies, uplift different people and have people to know that, hey, I might be thinking that same thing, but I just don't know because I ain't heard nobody else's story or I ain't never, you know, know the outcome of making things happen and making decisions. First off, I want to say uh, congratulations on your new position. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah. So can you like uh, tell us a little, tell us a little bit, like take us back before that happened. You, you had kind of shared it on your post, but for the people that, you know, may not have seen it, how did the journey go with you uh, taking a position and choosing to leave Toledo before you end up coming back? Take us through that. All right. So I started in corrections in uh, December of uh, 2013. I was at the Toledo, Ohio Correctional Institution. And I okay. did that for about six years. And uh, at the time, you know, you know, I don't know if you know, but Raphael Worthy. Yeah, you know, I know Ralph played was, football with him at once. Yes, sir. My, my so Ralph, Ralph was my guy at the prison, man. So he, uh, well, first, let me let me back up. I had a guy named uh, Ramon Hamilton. He's actually a cop. He's a police officer in uh, White House, Ohio, White Hall, White Hall, Ohio. And he uh, he was going through the police process. He's like, man, you'll be a good police officer, man. You know, you got this job down packed. You know how to deal with the guys. So, you you, you know, maybe you should, should transition from being a correction officer to a police officer. So I'm like, man, you know what? That sounds kind of cool because they need, they need guys from the inner city to be police officers. Yeah. So um, me and Ralph was talking maybe a couple of weeks later. He was talking about, man, we should go out to Vegas to be police officers. I'm like, let's go, let's go, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. So uh, anyway, I, I went through the process. Uh, and before I got hired with the police department, I, uh, I moved out there. I had moved out to Vegas. And uh, I think uh, things didn't go the way that they were supposed to on my end because I didn't plan for a lot of things that I should have planned for. I planned for the basic things, the, um, the raising rent, uh, yeah, but it was the, the small things that I didn't plan for, and I, I ran out of money, man. Quick. <laughs> so what, 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 let me let me back up a little bit. What was your transition? What was your thinking and your thoughts before you moving? Knowing we come from Toledo, we love Toledo. How we figure out family, friends. It's all we really know. What was in your mindset before you even took the leap of faith to say, "I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and do this"? I'm gonna tell you, I was ready to go a long time ago. Not in a right. not in the sense of. Well, it was kind of a hate for Toledo, but. But I do love my city. I love Toledo. But it was a love-hate relationship. Gotcha, I was ready to go a long time ago. And this was just an opportunity to do it. You know, I had, I had some experience in a, in a field that could get me hired anywhere in the country. Okay. So that, that, that's where the thinking was. Like, maybe I can leave and go get hired somewhere else and have a walk into a job. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? So then when, then when you go down there and you start to see, you know, the funds is getting low, what was your thought then? Was you nervous? Was you like, uh, like depressed? Like, how was you feeling? What was your emotions going when you was going uh, through that process? I, I was, um, in all honesty, man, I was just, I was worried about, I was worried about my kids at home because I had two kids at home. And uh, I was just trying to make things happen out there. You know, I was I was doing what I needed to do, going to try to find a cheaper place to live, all that. I, matter of fact, before I moved back, everything I fixed everything before I moved back. I was able to find a cheaper apartment, a cheaper, nice, small one bedroom in a in a in a worse part of the city, <laughs> in the inner city of Vegas. Because <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. on the outskirts, I was in the suburbs at first, living okay. good off the mountain. But I found a place on the north side of Vegas. Uh, so I really wasn't worried. It was just, it was, it was just either fix the problem here or go back home. It was, I didn't have too many choices, you know. And plus, I was older at the time. I'm, I'm 37, 38 years old, so yeah. I didn't been faced with problems before. So I kind of knew what I had to do without getting too emotional about it. It's just you either gonna do it or you're not. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So uh, take us through the transition on coming back home and finding uh, another opportunity, which led to a bigger opportunity, which led to a blessing, which you have now. Oh man, it, it, it that that <laughs> so I, when I came back home, man, I, I went to work back at the prison. And right after I came back, that's when I was offered a job as uh, a police officer of the Las Vegas Metro Police Department. I okay. got offered the job as soon as I maybe a month after I moved back to Toledo. So I did go through the process, the the 
I went back out there, did the medical testing and all that stuff. So I quit the job and at the prison again. I put my two weeks in at the prison. And uh, once I did that, I got a call from Vegas that told me that uh, I failed a part of my medical testing. They thought I had uh -huh. COPD. Really? Ended up being asthma. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I never smoked a day in my life, but I, I was scared, man. <laughs> I was scared. My, my cousin was saying, you need to get a second opinion. It can't yeah. be COPD, which you can get COPD if you don't smoke, but I didn't, I don't, I don't smoke, so I didn't have it anyway. So yeah. um at that point, I'm starting to look for jobs. So I, I went to JDC working down there with the kids. I went down there for six months and then ended up transferring to CTF slash work release. Okay. So then with, with that transition, did you say, okay, I'm back, you know, things is going good, I'm in, I'm, or did you say, you know what, I want better, I'm going to try to see if I can get something else with a promotion even in your site? No, I'm going to tell you, so, you, you know, you just interviewed my cousin, Ronnell Isom, man, that's that's my first cousin. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, shout out Ronnell to Ronnell. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so Ronnell and Ashley Gorey, which I know you went to start with Ashley, right? Yeah, yeah. They both told me about going to CTF, that's why I transferred over there, because I kind of got tired of working with the kids. They they they, they were a little rough, man. These kids in Toledo, yeah. they they need us. Don't get me wrong, they need us, man. But they 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 are a little bit too too rough for my liking, man. So yeah. I transferred back to the adult, I mean, went to the adult side, and while I was there, I had I had a hard time trans transitioning from maximum security to guys who were residents who weren't like it's not work release not it's not prison. These guys yeah. can leave the facility. And man, my mouth, like my tongue was just fast because I'm, that's what I'm used to at working at the maximum security prison. You gotta be yeah. able to keep up with these guys. So it was a lot of things that I was doing that it was like, man, you can't do that. These, this is just a different environment. So Ronell, he put me aside and gave me a couple of talks. At the time, Ronell was my supervisor. And man, he just, he straightened me out. Like, man, this is, you can't do that, but this is how you should, yeah. this is how you should roll with this. You know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, uh a supervisor position became came open. He was like, man, you should apply. Go ahead, man, apply, man, because you, you know the job. You've been doing this for so long. You, you're ready. So I applied, and I ended up getting the job. Yeah, man, that's dope. And that's what I love about Ronell, man, because he's so selfless, man. He always looked out for people, and he always tell you, like, whether you take it or not, he going to mm -hmm. give it to you straight. You know, sure. and, and he going to be able to be like, look, this is what I see or, you know, you ain't got to take it. But even for you to even be able to take that, even though I know y'all y'all tight, close blood and all that, mm -hmm. but you didn't even take it. Because some people would have been like intimidated or been like, no, I know what I'm doing and not even thinking about it. But you said I had to assess the situation yeah, to sure. be able to see like, you know what, I need to change. And and overall, God seen you, you know, you made a little adjustment and he blessed you with something else. Sure. For sure. Yeah, that, that's, man, that's you, amazing. I'll tell you this. I'm the only, well, I'm, I'm not speaking bad on anybody that was there before me, but I'm yeah. the only person that transferred from the prison environment to CTF work release that, that lasted. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just a hard transition. So a lot of people could, they couldn't handle it. They, they, they couldn't handle the difference. But man, like I said, he, he sat me down and talked to me and it was on, it was on the floor from then. And I, I've always, we, we've always been close and I've always, been ever as a, I'm his older cousin, but we've all I've always been ever to like, just chop it up with him and have good conversations with yeah. him. So I knew what what he was saying was coming from the heart, man. It just to make me better. So yeah. So now with this transition, will you see you being in this position until you retire, or is possible elevation can happen? Or are you just gonna master this for right now and and see what God blesses you? I want to master this for right now and just see where He take me from there. For real, in all yeah. honesty, I could I could retire from there. In all honesty, but I mean, no, we forty now, and ain't no, and, and don't we not old? We not old. We really just hitting our stride for real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but still, is I got kids to think about. Yeah. I got retirement to think about and all that, and it's stuff I want to do later in life, when I'm sixty. You know what I'm saying? Fifty five, sixty years old. That I don't want to have to be locked up in a job. To, you know what I'm saying? So I could be staying here, or I could try to promote within here, or just see what's next. That you know, God got for me for real. Um, you had touched on one thing, what you saying about the kids that you've been, you know, kind of how they are and they're, the way that they're acting. What do you feel like, and I know it takes a community to raise a child, what do you think it, is needed in the city of Toledo to help kind of get 
the kids on the right paper and try to, you know, make an effort because if we don't do nothing, you know, they're going to continue to be like that. It's going to continue to be problems, continue to be different things. Yeah. What do you feel like is needed? And what do you feel like, it, What what's causing it? Do you feel like it's in the music? You're a man of music. You know yeah. music, you love music. Do you feel like the, the, the intake of the music is causing them to act like they're those rappers or to mm-hmm. make live a false life? Well, I, I say this. I think that first of all, we're we're getting bad information from the from the media and the powers that be that black men don't take care of their kids. We're gonna start right there. Yeah. We take care of our kids. We are there for our kids. But for the guys that's not there, they make it a hundred percent harder. We are at an age where we're losing we're losing our kids. I mean, yeah. we got guys that we graduated with that are losing their kids, man, and it, it's sad. So that's where it starts. I uh, I kid you, it starts at home, man. Yeah. It really starts at home from day one, being there for your kids and, and leading them in the, in, the, in the direction that you want them to go in. Like yeah. people think that we can be, and we can be cool with your kids. I, 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 I hate when people say that you can't be friends with your kids, but your kids got to know the, they got to know the line, like you're in charge. Yeah. It, it starts there. And then we all, as a community, we all have to come together, man. When we see our when we see other people's kids getting out of line, we got to be able to correct them yeah, without having it. to worry about the parents coming and, and chastising us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, got to yeah. be able to correct each other's kids. Because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not short. I was at the movie with my son not too long ago, and some kids were, it was, it was either the movies or the mall or something, and some kids was out there acting up, getting ready to fight. I'm like, no, y'all can't be doing that, man. I got to right. chill out, man. Like, we have to be able to do that, man. It's yeah. scary though because these kids and they carrying all of yeah. them. Yeah, it's scary, man. You might run down on one of them that don't want your advice. You know what I'm saying? But we just gotta be. We gotta be able to be strong enough as a community to 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 be able to chastise each other's kids without being physical. Just being able to give them advice as we see them doing wrong. Yeah. Do you do you feel like it's like things that could be brought up? Maybe if it's city council or things that could be implemented for the use of places for them to go, different things and opportunities for them to be a part of something. Um. Yeah. Let me say this. Um. I I actually did an interview with uh, one of the editors at the Toledo Blade. He see the comment that I put on a post on Facebook, and he he asked me for my number and he called me, and he asked me what's one thing that I think. Uh, could change that to help or whatever, you know, the things that's going on. I told them, we see a lot of police officers talking to kids, and that's cool. Yeah. But y'all need to get some of these correctional officers because the cor- correction is where it ends. That's the yeah. that's the last thing that happened. All the police doing is arresting people. Not saying yeah. that they're not doing a they're not they're not doing a good job of doing what they're supposed to be doing, but we are the last line of defense. We see what goes on. We see where your life is going to end. You know what I'm saying? They need to be let us, they need to utilize us and let us be out in these communities talking to these kids, man. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, because when when the stuff I, that I've seen in a maximum security prison, man, these kids can't handle that. They don't want to, they don't want to have to live that life. Yeah, would that, be something, would that be something that you would be able to implement, whether it's talking to the TPS schools or talking to the inner city to, to implement that something since you got that position? Would that be something yes, that, that- I would, I, would, I would love to be able to do it. I just, in all honesty, I just don't know how to go about doing it. And maybe I could be doing more leg work in all honesty, but I don't, I don't know how, about how to go about doing that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who I can talk to about, or even if I can get some correctional officers who, 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 who rocking with what I got going on, who yeah. want to do that. But maybe I can start. I can look into that in all honesty. Yeah. Um. Last couple of questions. I'm going to get you up out of here. Like, um, for the ones that maybe be around the wrong ones, they make a mistake and they go in. Is it programs and different things that's in the inside, whether it's treatment center or whether it's even going downtown that they can be a part of to help them get out of trouble or to like kind of like a therapy session where they can talk to somebody to get them a different a second chance? Well, they do have they do have treatment in the different facilities. Uh, unfortunately, I'm on the correction side, so I don't know too much about the treatment in all honesty. But they do have treatment. They have different programs that these guys can go to and all that. As far as the kids, they definitely have different programs. Like I said, I was at JDC for six for six months. They definitely have programs that these kids can go to. But you know what I'm saying? The parents have to be able to, the parents have to want to do the legwork and find out what that stuff is. And all, I just don't know from my standpoint because I was a correct because I'm a correctional officer. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you, man, for taking this time out, man. I just want to just thank you and, you know, blessings on you and your new position. I know you're going to kill it, man, because I know your heart. Man. You always had a good heart. Like, you always been there good for something and you wasn't trying to be like everybody else. You was trying sure, to, sure. you know, be like yourself, find your way and find what mm -hmm. works for you all about family. And I believe that that implemented, can get implemented inside of your facility with your team and to get everybody on the right track to be able to, you know, have that one common goal. Definitely, man. I appreciate it, man. Yup, yup. It's been good, though. You hey, you always too, come through for me, man. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, you know, you know, you my boy, man. We known each other since freshman year. Yeah, you know, yeah. The freshman year, yeah, it's yeah. a long time, bro. <laughs> yup, yup. I appreciate you, man, and just oh, man, no kill doubt, it, man. Thank you. Yup, yeah, yeah. for sure, man. Peace, bro. Yup. Yeah. Yeah.